We're high court enforcement agents. We've got high court here. I'd like to sort this out face to face. Debts of over £12 billion are owed to people across the UK. £1,200 and never got it back. And many of them struggle to get paid what they're due. It now looks like she's avoiding to deal with this matter. When all other attempts to settle a debt have failed... Okay, so new job. Specialist enforcement agents are called in to recover what's owed. Your time of expiry has come. Armed with a high court writ... All checking desks are going to be closed until this matter's resolved. The agents have the authority... If you think we're doing something illegal, call the police. Expertise. Everyone can be found. We're easy. And the backup... We've made contact. We know they're there. ...to settle debts that no one else can. Our agents used as a last chance saloon. They take payments in cash. £6,200. Or seize and sell possessions. The car has been taken control of. I need to go on. To finally get the debt paid. This is 70 grand here. In these unprecedented times, agents are busier than ever. Oh, wanna put it me? But the challenge to recover the money from those that won't pay... Doesn't need to be this difficult, does it? No, but I think it will be this one. ...has never... Damn, don't touch me. ...been greater. He's going to call his brothers. I don't think it's to pay. Let's go. Debt never sleeps. Lovely weather, isn't it? I'm feeling great energy. Come day. I always love the morning visits. It's a new day. It's a new approach. Or night. Day in, day out, yeah. I'll go around cut cars and reel them in, as it were. The game shall continue. High Court enforcement agents are on the case. Whoops. Thank you, Mark. Wakey, wakey. Agents Mark and Virgil have an early start trying to recover an £8,000 debt. Six o'clock in the morning. The only person who knows how hard I work is my wife. But this morning, when I crawled out of bed at three o'clock, she didn't stir. <laughs> the thing is, though, if you don't do these hours, you're not going to get the money back for the claimants, are we? This is a large debt, which is owed to a student letting agent. It's against two debtors, your mother and son. We've instructed Mark and Virgil to go out and collect the debt on behalf of the client. On their previous visit, the agents were told by a neighbour that the family may own two high-value vehicles. So we are looking for a black BMW and a uh, black Jeep Mercedes 15 plate. They're hoping to take control of the cars before the family leave for work. We have a look at the vehicle, see where vehicles are. If there's one that cannot be blocked in, we shall clamp it. The one that can be blocked in, we will block in. The importance of finding assets is to gain payment. There, yeah, car is there, come on. Yeah, we've got it, there you go. You're not going to do it, excuse me, can you pay £10,000? They're going to say no. No, that's not here, mate. I think it's further up there. Let's have a quick drive, while you clamping that. If you're sitting by their car with a clamp on it, excuse me, can we pay £10,000? They're more likely to say yes, so... We need to find assets and leverage. Is no, that the one? It's a different Mercedes now, it was not there. We found only one car. I'm just frustrated we, we didn't catch the Merc here. I really wanted the Merc. All right. Let's do knockity knock. Are they awake now? The dog's awake. Oh, yeah. The mother and son who owe the money aren't home. Right. The issue is we've taken one of their cars into control. So if you'd like to get them on the phone. To track them down, the agents are given the father's phone number. And what do you want? We have a high court writ for your wife and I believe your son. Don't call me, OK? I believe you're the father. Yeah, yeah. And Don't I've just been told... Me, Hang on a minute, sir. I've just knocked at your door. Spoke to a young female, and she stated that they're all in the car with you going to work. Hence why I'm calling you. There is an outstanding amount of £8,035. The man is Romanian. I'll pass you over to Virgil, and he'll elaborate. And luckily for the agents... machine BMW Serie 1 aici. So is Virgil. Sunt niște documente, n-am nicio problemă, vă dăm înapoi. 
The father claims the BMW has been sold and he has the paperwork to prove it. Vino cu ați șarat în vecinul tău. Eu nu pot să eu nu pot să vin acum, când vrei tu, una la mână. A doua, eu sunt și eu la treburile mele și n-am cum să vin. If the car doesn't belong to the mother or son, the agents won't be able to remove it. Ok, nu e problemă. Nu e problemă. Vino și arată. Tati, dovă obligația este a ta să mi arăți, nu a mea să aflu. He said that the car doesn't belong to his wife, belongs to somebody else. He just sold it. So if you have something to show us, show us. Hopefully they'll come back. We just gotta wait a bit. So we're gonna take this clamp off, put the H clamp on the same wheel. But as they are securing the vehicle, That's it, mate. a woman shows up. Păi nu știu, trebuie să mă explicați dumneavoastră asta. She claims the car belongs to her. Noi putem să luăm mașina asta, o ridicăm, o ducem la licitație și o vindem. There is assets inside there. Doesn't look like they're doing a fly. <laughs> airline. When airline flights are delayed, customers can sometimes claim compensation or refunds. And called China. <laughs> But getting your money back isn't always easy. Many customers seek legal help. We've done thousands of these claims. We have found clients getting really frustrated. Unfortunately, it is quite common for airlines not to pay. But what we found the most is just a lack of communication. If we simply get no response, high court enforcement is really the only option we and our clients are left with. And today, agents Casey and Alex are on the case. So how exciting, we're on our way to the airport. Ooh, we like these ones. They're trying to collect a refund owed to a passenger since 2019. So we are going to the delightful Heathrow Airport. We have a major airline that owes money. The agents have the authority to seize and sell the airline's property to repay the debt. And the main assets an airline has at an airport are the planes. Their flight to New York leaves in just under two hours' time, mm -hmm. and we will stop the check-in yep. and inform them that their plane is to be grounded unless the amount owed is paid in full. And if that doesn't work, then we would have to get a special escort from the airport police onto the grounds to clear up a plane. Let's go. Make a move. Since COVID, we've had a massive increase in these type of cases. And it's not just this particular airline. There's been five, six, seven, eight major airlines that have been in the same situation. Yeah. So, in we go and <clears throat> see what we can do. Once inside... I'll talk to the police. They inform security that they're there to collect. Hello, sir. How are you doing? You got a warrant for Delta. <laughs> Would you believe? Thank you very much. We'll find them. Thank you. It's the check-in for a New York flight. Okay. High Court Enforcement, we've got a High Court whip for the airline. Check-ins closed till this matter's resolved. Coming up... She's begged that the check-in be allowed out. Will Casey and Alex have to clamp a plane? She did call the police. Listen, no one ever thanks us for turning up. Mark and Virgil want evidence. There's no contract, no invoice, no nothing. And Alex... Hello! ...wants answers. We've come three times, we need to sort this out now. So we're easy. At the moment, all checking desks are going to be closed until this matter is resolved. Agents Alex and Casey have closed the check-in desk of an airline. They owe just under £3,000 to one of their customers. We got a rich. There's an amount of money that is owed. And unfortunately, we've been sent here today to seize goods. Can we speak to the man? We need to get someone down here to speak to us. What a day for you, huh? 
The check-in staff get their manager on the phone. Thank you very much. Hi, my name's Alex. We've been instructed to uh, to attend here today because there's been no response regarding a, a High Court matter. There's a passenger who hasn't been refunded and it's gone all the way through to the High Court and the High Court has issued a writ to seize goods. But the manager isn't convinced the agents have the authority to close the check-in desk down. We can, I'm afraid. We do have quite a lot of power in relation to the seizure of goods. Unfortunately, we are we, we com- we're commanded by the High Court. We are able to seize the aircraft that is on the tarmac. It may seem slightly disproportionate when you're perhaps seizing a £50 million asset for a, a debt that is maybe only a few thousand pounds. However, it's the power that we have and it's brilliant leverage in order to resolve those type of cases. Are you a person in a position who's able to pay the amount that's owed? Because at the moment we're obviously instructed to make sure that the, the, the check-in is closed. If a flight is delayed... Yep, no worries. The airline could face further fines. So what she said is she wants us to go meet her in her office around Terminal 3. But she's begged that the check-in be allowed open. Yeah, no. So the airline has gone into meltdown because we've just closed their flight check-in to New York. Oh, we're not doing check-in here, sir. It's on delay right now. There was about three or four people going to check in. There's now four, more and more people turning up, so the queue's getting longer. But the airline isn't giving up. Hello there, you're right. Check-in is to remain closed until payment is made. If you are able to make the payment, we can do that over the phone and then the check-in can just carry on as normal. OK, I can't do anything about it. I've been instructed check is to remain closed. If you want to make your way over here, I will wait here for you. No worries. OK, bye-bye. Bye. OK, she says she's on her way over, so we'll have to wait and see uh, when she gets over here. And I said, can't do anything because I've asked her for payment over the phone and, and it's been refused. And I said to her, we, we, can, we can go over, we can go over and speak to you, but after the payment's been made. For it to get to this stage, I would imagine that the passengers made numerous efforts to contact them to get, to get her money back. It's a lot of money for someone to be owed by a multi-million pound company. It is very much a David and Goliath situation, and today we're trying to, to help David win. We're in the hustle and the bustle, mixing with the messes. <laughs> Agents don't always find the person they're looking for first time round. Hello? Anyone home? Alex and Sherry have been trying to track down a man who owes money to a financial services company. I'm Alex, enforcement agent. Three weeks ago, they paid their first visit to a possible address. He's at work. They discovered he was living there with his sister and brother-in-law. We've spoken to the sister and we've managed to get a phone number. So that's a good result. They still couldn't reach him. So a few days later, they were back. I tried ringing and texting all week. I have tried to get hold of you on numerous occasions. Please give me a call back urgently. The man who owes the money never got in touch. So today they're making their third house call. To keep going back and going back, it's very frustrating. Right. A lot of people think that I might go away, but I'm very persistent. I like to see something through to the end. This time, they're hoping the early birds... They're going to be checking you on the CCTV. ...will catch the worm. Hello? Anybody home? Hello? They're not going to answer, are they? Where's everybody gone at six in the morning? Hello? This is the third time I've come now, boss. It isn't the man they're after. It's his brother-in-law. We've left letters, nobody's answered. We've tried phoning him, he's not answered. Because we've come three times now, we need to sort this out now. So where is he? He says the man they're looking for is at work. 
He agrees to ask him to contact the agent, but he has a request. Please ask us, please, can we just have a seat in the car? It doesn't look nice for the neighbors. Oh, wow. Basically, he said, it's not nice us coming knocking on the door. It's embarrassing. So we've left the conversation as I said, I need to speak to the debtor. So he was trying to phone the debtor. So basically, we just sit here and waiting for him to phone us back. I've got payments because people have said, come inside. And I said, no. And they said, but the neighbors are looking. And I said, well, pay quicker. And then we go. And he seems to be trying to sort it out, but we need the debtor to contact us. He doesn't want us at the house, but we are here with a high court writ and we're not going to go away till it's resolved. So it's in his best interest to get it sorted. The brother-in-law calls back. He yeah, says, give him about 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Yeah, 10 minutes he'll speak to the brother. He's asked me again to please sit in the car because he's very embarrassed. He says we're embarrassing him in his neighborhood, but we're here to do a job. There's definitely something going on here. I can feel it in my bones. Can you? I can feel him in my bones, but I think that's just the cold. Bon, de la China has comparado. Mark and Virgil are looking for a mother and son who owe £8,000 to a letting agent for student accommodation. The agents have clamped a BMW they believe belongs to the mother. But the father claims it's been sold to someone else. Un document care dovedește proprietatea dumneavoastră asupra acestei mașini este o factură, un invoice sau un contract. Sometimes we do have situations when people claim ownership for goods. If they fail to present evidence, and if we do believe that they may belong to the debtor, sometimes we need to take them. She says she's the one that's bought it. She has the car key, analog book, but no proof of ownership. In moment, what's that? No, it's not a contract. No, it's not a factura. No, it's not an invoice. It's this simple. În momentul ăsta, dacă nu se plătește banul, se va lua mașina, se va duce la licitații, se va scoate cât se va scoate piacă. She calls the mother, who's the person named on the writ. They didn't have a contract, didn't have invoice, nothing signed. Money was paid cash. There's no contract, no invoice, no nothing. No money trail. Or... No money trail was cash. Oh. The thing is, they sort it out. It's no problem. We'll take off the clamp. Yeah. That's it. You know. Where was it going to go? She gets her on the phone. În momentul ăsta, suma de plată este 8.35.90 de pi. Dacă nu este plătită, întrebarea este, se poate plăti acum? She says she can't pay and maintains that she sold the car to the other woman. În momentul ăsta, această, pe logbook-ul ăla scrie că acel logbook nu este dovadă de proprietate. Legal, avem dreptul să o luăm și o vom lua și o vom vinde la licitație. Ceea ce noi nu vrem să facem. Asta este ideea. But she does have an offer for them. She's offering 200 pounds. 200 pounds? That's what she has, and she's going to offer another 500 pounds on the fifth, which I told her, unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. Because, obviously, they're not willing to make payment, so we are going to have to take the car. Bear with me, because uh, he's calling. The dad, the dad is calling. Oh. Then the father calls back. Mi-a arătat, vă repet, nu am absolut nicio problemă cu asta. Now his story is changed. He called saying that the car actually belongs to him. He bought it. He says he will meet them later and bring the evidence they need. But if he can't prove the car's his, it will be towed today. Agents Casey and Alex are at Heathrow. They are trying to get money back for a customer owed a refund by an airline. <laughs> the manager arrives and asks them to reopen check-in. The issue that we have is, every time we've done this in the past, it's taken up to six hours to get it resolved. It's not saying it's you, but in general, from other airlines, we've done this on numerous occasions. So in order to get the lines reopened, all we can do is take payment. Okay, we can do open them straight away. 
And do you have your credentials and all things like that? You can take a picture of that if you want. If that's okay. Show you the rest. This is who it's from. This yeah. Is the person that's actually claiming from you. Yeah. This is the amount. Yeah. Okay, okay, so can they, I'm here, yeah, here sure. so can they start checking this Yeah, let's this just get it cleared, it'll take two minutes. The manager hands over a credit card. I'm waiting to see it cleared. It's taken over an hour, but payment is made in full. So can they, they can open now, it's all done, go. Let me just calm down a little bit. No, that's fine, that's fine. We're not that type of organisation. You're not the only airline that we've had to be here for. I can't understand how the court can actually say that they can suspend. I'll, I'll, ex I'll explain everything. I did call the police because I didn't know you from Adam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know, do you know what I mean? We get that all the time. It's, it's perfectly I'm normal. Just... Listen, no one ever thanks us for turning up. The New York flight is good to go, and the passengers have a quick thinking member of staff to thank for that. Um, I'll phone you back in a minute if I'm able. I've had to pay <laughs> off of my own credit card. She was a bit shaky. But now she realizes who we are. She did call the police, however. Got a rip there from the court. You want to see it? Of course, she has every right to be suspicious. Getting a phone call saying that her counters have been closed. It's all done now, gents. We're going to leave now. Thanks for your uh, assistance. Thank you, guys and girls. Thanks very much. Cheers. Took a little bit of wearing and tearing and bringing down the management, but they were lovely when they got here. They just wanted to do everything to trust to make sure that we were actually legit and real. It was a shock factor. Yeah. That it's got to this stage. I mean, it's a multi-million pound yeah. airline and it's a £3,000 debt. Coming up... This is the one we're looking for, isn't it? A surprise for Mark and Virgil. I just don't get it. I'm just gobsmacked. Sherry and Alex turn up the heat. There's a time expiry on this year, and your time of expiry has come. And temperatures rise... I smell a rat. At the office. You fucking prick. Fucking idiot. Fucking twat. Another business has just hit our account. Show group? Yep. When enforcement agents are chasing money owed by a company... We've come to an address. No, onwards. We'll find them. It's often a challenge to locate the individuals responsible. All we need to do is speak to the director. Are you linked to that business? No. People with multiple businesses and different trading names... Hello? ...can prove hard to track down. No longer trading, eh? Yeah, no problem. We're now in the, in the lovely city of Reading. Pylon after pylon after pylon. Agent Casey and Alex are looking for a business that owes almost £6,000. They're like a casino in Reading. That's the third casino I've been past. My extensive knowledge of the city is across the UK because of rugby. Reading, great rugby team for the women. Quite uh, big farmer girls. Nice, friendly, but very scary when you're playing. The company liable for the debt is called United Car Parts. This has been a tricky debtor to track down, but we have an address of interest, so I've passed to Casey and Alex to attend. What I find amazing is that when you Google the name and when you look at the name for this, for this company, they don't have a website, they don't seem to have a telephone number, which is always a concerning sign for me. There's some information that I found out that they have a trading as company as well who are on eBay. They're active and they're selling stuff, so that's uh, a promising sign. And, and we, I believe that there may be attached to this address we're going to now. Right. Hmm. Hello, sir. Are you Wack Auto? You are. We need to come and have a chat with you. Is someone here who's in charge? Got to have a look around. We've got a high court writ. Okay for the address. All right. Hello, folks. We just need to verify a bit of information that we're looking for a certain uh, company that's trading from here. The manager claims that United Car Parts has gone into liquidation. We have evidence to suggest that United Car Parts has changed its name to WAC Automotive. Okay. So, so what are you trading as in this Max. office? Max Car Parts. So when I go on to United Car Parts and I click on a link, it takes me through to an eBay shop for Max Car Parts. You know that, don't you? There's something very, very fishy about all of this. The agents have the right to investigate. 
We've got a warrant, I'm afraid. We need to go through everything that's in this office. But the boss isn't pleased. Is Uncle Jane upset? And someone from the company is not happy about the cameras. I'll go over here. Yeah, get back then. I'll stand right here. My camera falls out of his hand, it's not my fault. I've got no shooting on the cameras. I mean, your camera on the floor, not mine. Look at me, you fucking prick. Fuck off, you cunt. Things are heating up inside. Wait a minute. There's paperwork for United Car Parks. I'm going to be brutally honest with you here. I smell a rat. And out. You want a close up? You want a close up, mate? Yeah. Fucking idiot. If the shoes are not clean, the body's not clean. That's my motto. Didn't I've come out with some nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Agents Alex and Sherry are waiting for a call from a man who owes a financial services company over £6,000. That makes me happy when I see that kind of a shine. Just looks like you haven't done any work. They've been told he will contact them at any moment. If I'm going out for an evening of dancing or anything, on go my jeans. Plus, my most comfortable thing, I've got, I wear a lot of dungarees. <laughs> Serious, I, I, I wear dungarees, that's, that's me. Are you? Dungarees? Yeah, very comfortable. You're deluded. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be very angry if this man makes us wait. We've come here three times, we cannot leave no, until we paid. Until it's sorted. Finally. Hello. The man they've been looking for gets in touch. It's Alex, I think you know what it's about. I don't know what's going on. A writ has been issued out against you for an amount of six thousand two hundred and forty six pounds and nine pence. For what? Well you should know you the one that owes the money. He says he's aware of the debt, but wants to dispute it with the company. As soon as I finish my job, I will give them a call, right? So what are you saying? I must stand outside your house until you finished work. No, sir, that does not work no, like but, that. Um, if you okay. got an issue with him, you should have taken it up with him when the first time we came and left the letter. I've come here personally and I've dropped three that, letters. I've honest. come here personally and dropped three letters through that letterbox. You had the opportunity to speak to them. Yeah. You have not done that. Okay. We're not going to sit and wait. I'm here to collect £6,246.09. and nine pence. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here. I didn't have that much money anyway. I, I think we... You have to allow me the time... No, I don't. So I've given you time from the first time I came and left the letters. I've given you more yeah, than enough time. Well, I have why to collect. Have to collect this money? Because Can the court sent to me out to collect it. The courts have sent me out. Do you not understand? This is a writ issued out against you. For, from where, they, where, where I'm going to get the £6,000 from? No, Can, no, Can I make a suggestion? Can I make a suggestion to you? Yes, of course, sir. Please, I suggest you phone family and friends to try and help you because I have to collect this money now. When the telephone is your only point of contact. You've got to be in control of that conversation from the beginning. I need to have it for two or three days. Because two or three days? Is that three weeks already? You've got to keep pushing back to, I'm here to collect the payment. No, no but there's a time expiry on that. this year. And your time of expiry has come. But at the same time, you've got to be understanding and you've got to listen. You need to work with them to say, right, let's get our heads together. Let's work out something. What I can do for you, in all honesty, is I can give you till this afternoon. I will give you till two o'clock to pay yeah. this money. If you do not get this money, I will come back. So I suggest, yeah. sir, you get hold of whoever it is and you raise this money and pay it. I can do what I can do. I've given you as much as I can give you and it's entirely up to you. You will have the consequences if it's not paid. Okay. So if he can pay something in today, I'll be quite happy. Then tomorrow, put the pressure on to say, right, I'm returning. The debtor's brother-in-law calls back. I have to finish this. I'm not supposed to actually leave till I've got paid now. Mm -hmm. And I understand the position you're in. It's your home, it's your reputation. So I will walk away now. And But by honestly, if he hasn't paid it by two o'clock, I have to come back. He's not happy with him. No. Doesn't end there, but uh, I got a feeling that this will end with a happy ending. Do you think? Yeah, I think so. The agents leave for now, but it's not over until the money is in the bank. Yeah. 
go. Mark and Virgil are heading to a BMW they've clamped. They're trying to retrieve £8,000 owed by a mother and son for unpaid student accommodation fees. I've got a really bad record for Fridays. Something always happens and we're there for two, three hours at the end. But they've had mixed messages about who owns the car. A woman claimed ownership. But now the father says the car belongs to him. Come on. The debt is in the mother and son's names. So, if there's proof the car doesn't belong to either of them, the agents will need to release it. He's asking if I can go alone and speak with them. Give me five minutes. Okay. Give you two. Machina is there, man. Plutito de mil. Simple. A lot of the times people take it personal with me because they think I'm there to fight with them. When somebody lashes at me, I just take it in, I got broad shoulders, I don't take, never take it personally because I know they got nothing personal with me, they're just mad about the situation that they are in. Habar n-am, domnul meu, dar nu știu, eu nu știu dacă sunt pentru această mașină. Voi? Ce să-ți arăt mai mult de atâta, mă iei ca pe copie. I don't know much Romanian, but uh, I'll take his not going very well. <laughs> I'm going to walk over there and start adding the pressure. You'll take the factura when you buy the machine, if it's my name. You'll take the time when you sound. Right. How's it going, pleasure? So basically, in a couple of minutes, they're going to send us the invoice for the car and his name. That's how it looks. So he's no, he's had all day today. I know. He's had all day. Let us give it the benefit of the doubt. Give him a couple of minutes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just because uh, yeah. apparently they have it, but just she just needs to find it. Give her a couple of minutes. Okay. So I think she's coming now. Is she? Oh, brilliant. Use car invoice. <laughs> this is the one we're looking for, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry. Something's. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Because I'm just gobsmacked. I, I know. Basically, we've asked to see the bill of sale to prove who's purchased the, the car. He's brought it out with uh, the debtor's name on it. So he's just given it black and white. That car's his son. As it's the son's name on the High Court writ, the agents can now take the car. Pe factura care se liberează în urma cumpărării, da? Proprietar. I'm just going to get my van to block the car in because it's a known tactic that he will bring his car to block it in to stop us from moving it. I'm going to beat him to it. Va veni removul tracu și o va lua și vă duce la licitație. Vă vom lăsa toate hârtiile pentru asta. Mașina mea, mașina mea, nu înțelegi? Nu e nicio mașină de aici, știi în poliție? Dacă mă împiedicați să o iau, veți fi arestat dumneavoastră. Right, Virgil. It's lifted, yeah? Yeah, lifted. They come in. Casey and Alex are trying to pin a £6,000 bill to its rightful owner. I don't touch anything. I'm just looking at things, sir, please, like I said. They believe they might have found the people responsible, but they're claiming they no longer trade as United Car Parts, the company on the High Court writ. Right under her desk. United Car Parts. Why is this here? However, the agents have found evidence that they might be. There's a lot of mail when it comes to United Car Parts. If we hadn't have found yeah. all this paperwork, I'll tell you what, we'd have gone by now. But something doesn't mean true to me. The man admits he used to own the company, but sold it in 2019. So he says the new owner is responsible for the bill. You're telling me that this company here is nothing to do with this writ because it was different United Car Park. Unfortunately, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna make a, a, a phone call, okay? You've got two United car parts. One of them is in liquidation. One of them has changed its name to WAC. They're claiming to have no affiliation and they're completely separate, different company. However, we've just found correspondence in there for the defendant company. I smell a rat, a big, fat, dirty rat here. Now it's about proving it. I do feel like I'm doing your filing, though. You have to be a good investigator. 
I kind of proud myself on that part of it in our team. This comes from you, and it's about a grant. I'm more of a sniffer dog because I will not stop until I find something that links them. You understand how thorough we are now? You have to be calm and just look for the things that you know, like bank statements or, you know, go to the accountant's desk and go around until somebody kind of does a little bit of an, an attitude change. And then, you know, you've got the warm spot and that's where uh, we'll tend to close it, close the case on them. Hold on a minute. You're telling me that you stopped people from using your name, right? The email, I'm just trying to explain to you. January 2021. Despite claiming they stopped trading under that name in 2019, United Car Park. The paperwork seems to tell a different story. But a look at the dates, Alex. It's all the way to 2020. Tax breakdown all the way to 2020. Why would you have all of this correspondence here? They say they used to rent office space to the other business. In my opinion, I think there's a little bit more affiliation between the two things than you're letting on. There are interesting developments here because we've now found paperwork dated two weeks ago with the defendant company's name. You've got the company's numbering. October 2020, United Car Park. I mean, people are working in there, and on their desk are invoices and letters entitled United Car Parts Limited. We are satisfied that he's been trading as that same company and that he is liable for it. If the agents have enough proof and payment is not forthcoming, they have the authority to lock up the office and seize assets. We have found copious amounts of correspondence for the defendant company that you're claiming to have no affiliation to. Look, I'm going to be brutally honest with you here, based on what's been found. Unless this debt is paid, this is being closed today. I'm going to ask you a simple question. Are you making the payment for this? Coming up. Game on, blood. It's time to pay up. Folks probably think we're just bluffing. Big game of chicken is going to duck first. Or shut up. I'm over it, Alex. So we've been here too long. Are you going to pay it or do we have to lock the shop? Here you go. March 15th, 2021. Alex and Casey have spent two hours at an office. They're investigating whether the company there are liable for a £6,000 unpaid bill. I'm over it, Alex. There's nothing we can do for them, unfortunately. There's no more arguing. I'm sorry, sir. We've been here too long. Despite mounting evidence, they still claim they're not responsible for the debt. It just keeps going, Alex. And these are all brand new. March 2021. And paid on a credit card that's in the company name. There's no more arguing. Sir, are you going to pay or do we have to lock the shop? Actually, I don't mind coming outside with you. You have too much evidence here. I know I can unequivocally mm -hmm. prove that it's not, that's mm -hmm. not my debt. I'll get my lawyer involved. Now, I'm, I'm giving you my advice because at this present moment in time, we've got sufficient goods and sufficient evidence to lock the shop up. I can't afford to. Right, so what I would suggest is you try and, try, try and go and raise it by credit card, debit card or cash, and we get it resolved. What if I pay you half on, you, got, you know where I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Mm, but it has to be paid in full. Yeah, but the alternative is a shop that gets locked up. That's not an alternative. <laughs> that is an alternative because they, they literally will get me to call a locksmith. Locksmith will come and change every lock in this place. Are you making the payment for this? It's taken over two hours. Okay. But the man agrees to pay the debt in full. Let me write a receipt out for you. Casey? Yeah. We're done. Perfect. Okay. We got there in the end and it was yeah. purely down to Hold your... Um, your, uh, investigation, your investigation yeah. skills, yeah. really. I think you had a feeling, didn't you? Yeah, I, I You had a feeling that yeah. something wasn't right. I wasn't going to stop. Try to be as nice yeah. and give them, what, two hours, enough time. Yeah. But usually I'm, I'm, I'm the one that becomes a little bit of a witch and says, that's it. I've told him now that if he believes that he has this sufficient evidence that he's not the liable party, he's got the 14-day period in which to provide that evidence and submit the relevant appeal to the courts. And if he wins, he gets his money back. And if he can't prove that, then the matter's resolved. Good job, mate. All right, let's get out of here. Time to have a dance and go home. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> the agent's 14-day window expired. No appeal was made and the claimant was paid in full.
because obviously they're not willing to make any arrangements for payment. So we are going to take the car. Mark and Virgil have spent all day trying to resolve a debt of £8,000. They're waiting for a tow truck to take away the only asset they've found to seize, a BMW. I'm sure he's maybe going to prevent us from um, taking it. If you have an option, he just might just pay. I know it's not his debt, I do, but it's his wife and his son. Uh, He's driving around the car like that. Their family's got money. It's two things. Either they're waiting for the removal truck to get here and they're like, okay, you know, I'll pay it. Or they're just going to be, you know what, take it and that's it. They just probably think we're just bluffing. Yeah. Big game of chicken, is it? Who's going to yeah. duck first? Yay! Game on, bud. Hello, mate, you all right? Yeah, good. We're going to take this BMW here. Failure to pay means the amount owed has gone up significantly. So at the beginning, when before it went to court, it was 5,700. Then obviously it escalated to high court with interest, high court fees plus removal. It went to 9,300. Storage costs as well, 30 pound a day. Plus VAT. Plus VAT, but you've got the auction costs. It's just snowball out control. If you to listen to us, but. I know best. Thank you very much, sir. Bye bye. But the sale of the car won't cover the whole debt. Won't be sold uh, because of that car, but we will be coming back. We're probably hoping that we just disappear. But yeah. then again, he may see sense and call up and pay it tomorrow. We arrived here at six o'clock, sun was rising, and now it's. 10 to 8, sun's setting, it's a long day, successful day. Conclusion, you spend more time with me than with your wife. That is a scary thought. <sighs> right, Mark, let's go. Anyone else who claims to own the vehicle could still try and prove they do before it's sold. If that claim is successful, the car would be returned to them and the agents would be back to get the debt paid another way. Hello, anybody home? Alex and Sherry were trying to track down a man who owed almost £6,000. Because we've come three times now, we need to sort this out now. So we're easy. They found out he lived with his brother-in-law, who wasn't happy about them being there. He asked us, said, please, can we just have a seat in the car? It doesn't look nice for the neighbors. Oh, wow. When they finally got hold of the debtor, they set him a deadline to pay up. I can give you till this afternoon to pay yep. this money. But has he kept his end of the bargain? The name person on the writ has not been forthcoming. He, is, he had been elusive. And the person that's been forthcoming was his brother-in-law. He texted saying, check your bank account. And he had paid in a thousand. The debtor's brother-in-law has paid off three of the six thousand pounds owed. He set up a payment plan to clear the rest of the bill. At this stage, we've collected half already. He's been paying. In my opinion, that's a victory. Yeah. So we're only fighting now for the other half. With £3,000 in the bank, the agents are hopeful the balance will be paid in full. Next time... Hey, big guy, what's your name? Come on, Casey, let's go. How much money you got? This is All the right. address, and those are his license plate. Can we get it quick time, please? Alex and Casey, get clamping. Your Range Rover's been seized. You know who it is. I'm your favourite enforcement agent. And Mark's in the driving seat. Seems you've forgotten about me. Can you pay this off? Because at a minute, basically, we're saying you've defaulted. The High Court writ is in place. They want some money. And the bailiffs are back next Monday at nine. And if you or someone you know has been affected by any of the issues raised in tonight's episode, please go to channel5.com slash helplines for information and support. We're on shift with Casualty 24-7 next. <laughs>